بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome my beautiful sisters to our weekly lesson In these lessons we are learning verses from Quran We are learning authentic sayings of our Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام We want to learn our Islam, we want to learn our beautiful Islam, the way it is, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to learn it. We want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he wants, not the way we want. It is not that we choose whatever we want and leave what we don't want. We do not choose what is suitable for us. We trust fully. That whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders me to do is the best for me. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders me to stay away from, then it is not good for me. It's not good for me in this dunya. It's not good for me in akhirah. And we have to, to know that. Everything is in Quran and Sunnah for a reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. Inna rabbaka labil mirsad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over us. He wants to see your choices. He wants to see the decisions that you make every day. You make decisions. You decide how you want to think. You decide how you want to feel. You decide what you want to speak, the words that you say. You choose also your behavior. You choose your lifestyle. You choose your habits on daily basis. You choose how to live your life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do the right thing. The choices that we make are the worshiping that we do. This is how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَحَسَبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا Do you think that we created you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you that you think that he created you for no reason, for no purpose. The purpose here, the reason, the goal is to do what he orders us and to keep away from haram that he prescribes for us. وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ You think that you're not going to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You think that you're not going to be asked about these decisions, about these choices. You think that you're not going to be asked about your intention, about your goal, about your habits every day. No, we are going to be questioned about every detail, about every minute, about every second, every word, every action, every Uh, thought and, and, and emotions that we have to choose, we have to change, we have to purify ourselves. Does the human being think that he will be left living this life without a purpose? Do you think he will be left, left without rules, without restrictions, without obligations, or even without uh, boundaries? There have to be boundaries in this dunya that we have to stick to. We have to hold the responsibility. We are accounted. We have to be, uh, we have to, to be aware. We have to be conscious about everything that we do. Because everything that we do is written by the angels. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak with us. And he will ask us about all these things that we have done. And when it comes to haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he prescribed for us what is haram. Allah made it clear for us what he wants us to do and what he doesn't want us to do. Allah says he made everything that is haram for you clear. He gave us all the details. Fassala means he explained in details what is haram for you. To keep away from it. And we are learning the obligations in these lessons. What we are supposed to be doing. We are also learning the haram. To keep away from it. Usually, usually in general. The reason why people do haram. Or eat haram. Or speak haram. 
they are distracted in this dunya. When we get distracted in this dunya, subhanallah, we're not going to be focusing on akhirah. We're not going to be on the straight path anymore. We will go to another way because we are focusing on the wrong things. One of the reasons for being distracted is focusing on dunya, materialistic things, focusing on people, focusing on the future here on earth. And this is all dunya. Kalla bal al-ajila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you love this life and you focus on it. وَتَذَرُونَ الْآخِرَةِ And you do not prepare for akhira. You're not focusing on akhira. We have to have balance between living this dunya but preparing for akhira. That's what we are after. Balance. We will enjoy the halal things in this dunya and we will leave the haram and we are going to prepare ourselves for akhira, inshallah. Because when we go back to Allah, Allah described the believers who have that balance by saying, These people will have glowing faces. Their faces will be soft and they will be happy and they will be at ease. And they will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our ultimate goal, inshallah, in this dunya, is to have peace in our mind, peace in our heart, to have satisfaction, to enjoy the little things in this life, do the obligations and choose halal, keep away from haram, whatever it is, small or big, inshallah, so that we can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that we can speak to him and he is pleased for us. So everything is clear. Everything is said in Quran and Sunnah. And we are going to have examples, inshallah, so that we can keep away from the haram. We are going to have some examples of the characteristics of the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Inna hadaynahu sabila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he guided the human being. The straight path is clear. Allah gave us the options. He said, this is haram and this is halal. This is good. This is evil. And you have to choose. Imma shakiran. Some people thank Allah for the blessings by choosing halal, by obeying Allah properly. Wa imma kafura. And some people, they want to enjoy the, bount the, the, the bounties from Allah. They want to take, take, take but they do not want to keep away from haram. So we are in Ramadan now, and the reason why we fast is to gain taqwa. And taqwa is to stick to halal and to keep away from haram. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he orders us. One of the characteristics of the believers, if you want to worship Allah the way he orders you, then he says in Surah An-Nur, because we're talking with women here. I am speaking with women. I am talking. I'm going to give the part of the ayah that is for women. وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Say to the believers, the women. Say to the women believers, يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ Lower their gaze. As a believer, my beautiful sister, you need to lower your gaze. Lowering the gaze, sometimes we think, oh, this is for men. Men shouldn't look at women. Men shouldn't watch these um, women. But it is not only for men. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبَصَارِهِمْ Say to men, tell them to lower their gaze. Not to look randomly. When, 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 you, when you see something haram in front of you, lower your gaze. Don't look. Keep away from uh, the illegal intercourse and whatever leads to it. And what leads to it is looking at haram, listening to haram. When, when a person watches movies, 
with ugly scenes, women half naked, men in their underwear. Of course, what is going to happen to this person? It will it will do something inside them. And of course, men are not like women. They are different. But we are all human beings. In the end, we are all human beings. So first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders men to lower their gaze, keep away from illegal intercourse and whatever leads to it. That is more purifying to them. It is purifying. You have to purify your heart by not thinking about the haram, by not desiring the haram. When your brain takes you to the haram path, you say, A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim No, I will not think like this. I will not desire something haram. We restrict ourselves and we say, A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim Inna Allah khabirun bima yasna'un. Allah knows everything about you from deep inside and outside. Allah knows what you want. Allah knows what you're thinking about. Allah knows what you need. Allah knows everything about you, but he is watching you. He wants to see, are you going to control your thoughts? Are you going to control your desires? Are you going to control your emotions? Are you going to control your eyes not to look randomly at haram? Are you going to control your hearing not to hear the haram things? Because we know that it will lead to haram. So if you know yourself, you know that listening to songs or listening to certain things or music will, will it, it plays a role with your emotions. It will make you feel lonely. It will make you feel... You will have these desires that you do not want. So what do you do? You cut it from the roots. You know, anything that makes you feel something, it triggers you, stay away from it. Learn how to keep away from the haram. So, so this is an order to women to lower their gaze. Do not watch things on social media. You're going to start you're going to start comparing between yourself and her you're going to start comparing between your husband and her husband your house and their house you're going to start comparing your abilities to their abilities and then you will start feeling bad and then you will feel unworthy you have to protect yourself from everything that makes you feel lonely or bad or uh, whatever Anything that makes you desiring the haram, but from the beginning. So lowering the gaze is for women as much as it is for men. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna as-sam'a wal-basara wal-fu'ada kullu ulaika kana anhu mas'ula. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hearing and sight and the heart you are responsible for all of them. You are responsible for what you are listening to. You are responsible of what you are looking at. You can be looking at normal things and then you get distracted and then you start watching other things. You have to be always alert. You have to be always aware. That you're listening to halal. You're looking at halal. You're just thinking even your heart, your emotions, that you're shifting your emotions to the halal side because you know that Allah can see. Allah knows when you are looking at something in the haram way, the haram looking, Allah knows it. وَمَا تُخْفِي الصُّدُورِ And he knows what your heart is hiding. You have to be careful. So you have to be careful. Everything you are watched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is at taqwa It was difficult for people to look at haram and listen to haram in the old days. Today, everything is on your device and it is in front of you. You're sitting with your device alone. But all these things that you are watching and that you are listening, it is playing a big role 
with your goals, with your habits, with what you want now. What, what do you want? What's your purpose in life? Some people lose the purpose. They don't know why they are alive. Some people are confused. Some people are lost. And they are Muslims. She's a Muslim. She prays five times a day. She recites the Quran. But because she goes to social media, scrolling all these videos, and she's looking at people posting all these things about their private lives, and then she becomes depressed. She becomes addicted to social media. She becomes addicted to watching other people. And then the heart becomes dry, and then you go to the wrong path. You are responsible of your heart, my dear. You watch over your heart and make sure that you're not listening to anything haram or, or even looking at anything haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to watch these things. Even if you are outside, like when you go to the clinic, don't sit down watching people up, down. When you go to the shops, don't start watching people. When you are in your car, don't just watch people. Watching others and looking without consciousness is not right. Even for the sitting in the in outside. When the Sahaba, and they are Sahaba, they are pious people, religious people, good people. They have the Prophet ﷺ with them. He said to them, Iyakum. Iyakum is a word we say it when we warn people. In Arabic, if you want to say to someone, do not do this, you say Iyaka for the male, Iyaki or Iyakum to do this. I warn you. To do this, there will be consequences. I warn you, do not sit in the streets. So you can be in the in the uh, in the car, you can be in the shopping center, you can be in the medical center, you can be in the uh, in the car, or, or even you you can be just in the streets walking, um, or you can be in a restaurant. Wherever you can be at, at your job, you can be in a building outside, maybe you're going to do papers, you have forms, you have something to do, and you're just sitting there waiting for your turn. Are you sitting watching people? Are you watching everybody around you? That's subhanAllah, you have to be careful not to be looking around too much. So the the companion said, Ya Rasulallah. Peace be upon you, O Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا لَنَا مِنْ مَجَالِسِنَا بُدٌ نَتَحَدَّثُ فِيهَا So, like, we have to sit down. Like, there's nowhere else to be. We need to sit down and meet each other. So there is no place other than in the street. Sometimes in front of the mosque, we will sit down and we will be talking. How are we going to talk to each other? We do not want to visit each other. But we just finished the prayer. We need to speak or we, we need to, to go and do something. Uh, someone maybe went to the shops and then someone came and they are talking. So that's in public. So we have to speak in public, Ya Rasulullah. It is very necessary. There's no other uh, alternative. Then he said to them, so if you had to meet and talk in public, then in public, the street and the people around you in public has rights. So you have to make sure that you're giving everybody their rights in, in, in public. They said, what is this right? What's the rights of others in public, Ya Rasulullah? He said, Ghaddul Basar, that's number one. So, Ghaddul Basar means watch where you look at. Do not watch people. Do not look at people staring at them. People's private lives is a red line. So, do not stare at people randomly. 
Just lower your gaze. Look at the person who is talking to you. Number two, he said, وَكَفُّ other. كَفُّ other means do not harm anybody. Do not hurt anybody. If you have to be in public, if you have to be in a restaurant, if you have to be somewhere outside your house, do not hurt or harm anyone. So the first one was lowering the gaze. Don't look at them. Don't stare at them. Don't make them feel uncomfortable. Number two, do not harm them. Harming them can be, maybe you saw a girl and then you start talking about her, like making fun of her, making fun of people, uh, yelling at them, embarrassing them. Or uh, maybe it can be saying words to uh, about them. Like maybe like you saw someone and then you start accusing them of things. You just saw someone with a man in the middle of the street. And then you will be like, oh, I know this girl and she's with a boy. Oh, my God, this boy, this girl is doing something haram. And then you start spreading rumors. Maybe the boy she's with is her brother. And you say, but I haven't seen her brother. Maybe she has a brother who is traveling overseas. Maybe he is her uncle. He came from overseas, maybe, and he's walking with her. So basically, maybe he's a mahram. And then you start gossiping about her. So there are a lot of people who gossip and backbite and they, they, they spread rumors about others without knowing the real picture. So kafful adha. We're not allowed to harm people with our tongues. We're not allowed to harm them with our devices, spreading rumors, taking pictures of others. You know how many people take videos and pictures of people and then they put it on social media as a joke. Uh, look, this girl fell down. Let me post it and let people laugh. And and they they spread the secrets of people. Maybe someone did something embarrassing and then we just take a picture, we take a, a, a video and then we post to have views. This is not allowed. This is embarrassing people. This is harming them. This is hurting them. We're not allowed to embarrass people and spread their uh, mistakes on social media or even by speaking about it. The, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ And those who hurt or harm the believers, men and women, بِغَيْرِ مَكْتَسَبُوا And they are innocent. An innocent woman, an innocent man walking in the street, something happens when they, with them. And then we just make fun of them and and uh, we, we spread rumors about them. And they are innocent. فَقَدْ احْتَمَلُوا بُهْتَانًا they will carry in the day of judgment a major sin called buhtan. Buhtan is a major sin. What is buhtan? Buhtan is the biggest uh, level of lying. So lying has levels. There is lying and then a bigger, bigger, bigger. Buhtan is the biggest of them. So it's a major sin. It's a major sin to hurt or harm people when they are innocent. وَإِثْمًا مُبِينًا And they will carry in their scale of sayyat and they will carry in the day of judgment the, they, they will carry إِثْمًا مُبِينًا a clear, a clear sin. So it is clearly haram to harm people. If you want to sit down in a place, don't take videos of people. Do not take pictures. Do not put on social media as a joke. It's not fun. It's not funny, actually. It is embarrassing. You know how many people spread like a video or they, they just post things or the, the, the news of people and then they just put it on the... Do you know how many women got divorced because others post pictures or videos from inside a wedding, inside even a funeral? She will be sitting in a funeral, maybe by mistake, 
she was talking with someone and then she was smiling. And then they will take a picture. Look how disrespectful she is smiling in the funeral. Why? Why are we doing this? If you have a problem with someone, do not spread gossip about them. Go to the person, go to the lady and say to her, can I speak to you privately? Take her privately. Tell her, honey, you are laughing loudly. And it's a funeral. Please be careful. Allah yarda alayki. Just lower your laugh. Thank you very much. If she's doing something wrong, go to her. Privately tell her. Nicely, kindly. Don't go and talk, oh, look, look, look what she's doing. Look what she's dressing. Look how she's sitting. Look what she's talking. Look how she's eating. Look how she's standing. Why? Why are we doing this to each other? This is not acceptable. This is buhtan. Hurting Muslims with your tongue. Hurting Muslims by posting things about them. Hurting Muslims with a look, with a mean look, is buhtan. It's a major sin. Clearly, the verse is clearly saying if we spread people's mistakes and they are innocent or if we judge them because oh, I judge people and then I just want to spread it, that is not acceptable. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man satara musliman. You saw a Muslim doing something wrong. If you cover that and do not spread it, man satara musliman, satarahu Allahu yawm al qiyamah. Cover the mistakes of people. If you want to speak to them, speak to them privately. Tell her, I want to advise you, but I will leave it to you. You can accept my advice, you can reject it. It's your choice in the end. I just want to tell you that you're sitting here smoking in the and in, in outside for example and it's like if you want to smoke can you please go and smoke inside or outside for example some people are sick here some people are uh they, they like they, they can't tolerate the smoking or like can you habibati can you please go and smoke outside you don't go and you tell everybody oh she was smoking next to us i couldn't breathe i couldn't like, why and you didn't say one word in front of her, but you can go behind her back speaking about her like she's an evil, like she's a devil. We don't want to do that. If you cannot advise her personally, don't speak about her. Let's cover the mistakes of each other. Let's not talk to each other like that. So this is very important. So if you are outside if you are in your car, don't look at people in their cars. Don't look at people walking, just watching them, looking at them, making them feel uncomfortable. So this is the right for people in public. You're on the beach or you're in a park. You don't sit down watching people and look like watching them up and down. Lower your gaze, my beautiful. salam. If someone greets you, you say, Wa alaykum as salam. Raddu as salam, to answer the greeting is a must. The rule is, it's a choice to say, As salamu alaykum. If you want to greet someone, it's a choice to say, As salamu alaykum. But it's not, you greet someone and you leave someone. That's not, that's not, that's, that's not good. If you want to greet, when there is a group of people or two people, greet both of them. You want to handshake a woman, handshake the one in, in, next to her. You want to say, Assalamu alaikum, whoever she is, say, Assalamu alaikum, sister. When you greet, greet all of them. Or don't greet anybody, it's better. Or say, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. But you go handshake someone and leave someone else because are oh, you like you have a problem with her. 
if you have a problem with someone, don't show all people in the room that uh, there is something between these two women. Don't show it in front of everybody, you know? So it's a choice to say assalamu alaikum. If you say assalamu alaikum, you have 10 hasanat. If you say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, you have 20 hasanat. If you say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, that's 30 hasanat. Every hasana, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, it's, it's a hadith narrated by the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. And in another hadith, every hasana, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angel on the right to write it times from 10 to 700 hasanat. So if you say assalamu alaikum, that 10 will be at least 100 because it will be times 10. Anyway, but when it comes to answering, answering is a must. So it's a choice if you want to greet someone or not. But if someone says, Assalamu alaikum, it's a must. You have to say, Wa alaikum assalam. You don't have to speak to her. You don't have to open a conversation. Just, Wa alaikum assalam. Sorry, I have to go. All right? So, Raddu salam is a must. If you do not greet back, it's a sin. Yes. Because it's a... It's it is a um, uh, it's a right over uh, like Muslims have a right over you when they say to you Assalamu alaikum you greet them back you're upset with your husband you don't want to talk to him it's okay but if he said to you Assalamu alaikum say wa alaikum assalam don't speak with me I'm still upset <laughs> tell him it's okay but the 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 silent treatment. Not good, not healthy in relationships. So if you are upset, your 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 son comes to the room and greets you. Greet him back, honey. And he, if he wants to speak to you, tell him, I'm still upset with you, honey, with what you did. I need some time to calm down. I'm still angry. So I'll talk to you when I calm down, inshallah. You don't just treat them like they're not there. You don't ghost someone. Like he's in front of you saying to you, Assalamu alaikum, and you're just looking to another direction and you don't even look, you don't even greet, you don't speak, you're, you don't exist. I don't see you. You are nothing. We don't do that. Never do this to anybody. If you are upset, say what you said hurt me. You have the right to keep the boundaries. You have the right to keep away from someone who hurts you. But we need to uh, answer the, the, the greeting and express our emotions in the right way. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَالْأَمْرُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَالْنَهِي عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ So if you see something haram, then you can advise people again. Privately, nicely, kindly. We do not hurt people. We do not embarrass them. We do not shame them. We do not speak about them. And we say, oh, this is al-amr bil-ma'roof wa nahi an al-munkar. When you see something good, tell people like, oh, I love what you did. I love what you said. Tell people, appreciate what they do. And tell people, what they, uh, they, if they are doing something wrong, tell them nicely, advise them, and tell them if it is haram. Again, we have to be patient when we do that. So these things are very important. In another hadith, the Prophet والسلام, saw a group of companions sitting, um, like the the companion said, like we were sitting in the, it is either like a backyard or the front yard. So they were sitting in a yard. Okay. So it's in front of a building, probably in front of a masjid or in front of something or in front of a house. So they're sitting in a, 
um, like in a yard. And then the Prophet والسلام, went to them and he said to them, ما لكم والمجال ولمجالس الصعودات So he asked them a question like, why are you sitting in the, in, in like in, in public? Why are you sitting outside in public? So because where they're sitting, people are passing, going and coming, and their women will be passing, children will be passing, families, people in general. So he said to them, why are you sitting in public? They said, we just sat down to speak, Ya Rasulullah, and, you know, a reminder to remind each other. And he said to them, if you have to, فَأَدُّوا حَقَّهَا so if you have to be in public, then you, there are rights for the people in public upon you. And he said, غض البصر is the first one. Lower your gaze. Don't look at people staring at them, making them feel uncomfortable. وردت السلام. Answer the greeting. If someone passes and says, السلام عليكم, answer them. Say wa alaykum السلام. وإذا حييتم بتحية Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, if someone greets you, then greet them back as they did or better than them. So say wa alaykum as salam, the least, or you can say wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And then he said number three, wa husnul kalam. Choose the good words. So if you have to sit together in public, choose the good words. So don't be mocking people in the streets. Do not make fun of people, body shaming them and gossiping about them. Don't point at people, look and stare at them. That is not good. That's not nice. That's not halal. Choose the good words. Some people are in public. They will be just joking and their jokes are dirty. Do not say dirty words. Do not say swear words. Do not call each other ugly names. Only choose the good words. That's husnul kalam. So we have to be careful what we are speaking. What about if we are in public? I am in my car and then suddenly I see a woman, but she's wearing very short dress or revealing her maybe back or like, is that haram? Is that a sin? Like I just saw her in front of me and then I turned my face. I lowered my gaze. But I already saw her. Is that haram? Well, a one companion went to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and he asked the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam an nazar al fujaa. Nazar al fujaa is I saw something suddenly, and I know it's haram, but I lowered my gaze. So the second or part of second that I saw the haram. Is, is that a sin on me, Ya Rasulullah? Do I have to repent from that? The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said to him, Israf basarak. So when you see something haram, suddenly lower your gaze. If you lower your gaze, if you turn away from the haram, whatever you saw suddenly, inshallah, is not a sin. So what is haram is to keep staring, is to keep looking. That is the haram, all right? What about women now? The question is, can a woman look at a man? There are men now, like men make videos. Okay, a woman is not so supposed to be on social media. A woman is not supposed to put her picture on social media. Women are women. You just... um men are not allowed to look at women. So you're not going to put your picture, you're not going to put the videos, you're not going to go outside wearing something attractive, you're not going to go out looking attractive to help men to lower their gaze when they see you. All right, so what about the women? Do women also have to keep their sight from looking at men? The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, in this authentic hadith, was with his wife, um, Maimuna. So Maimuna 
and his other wife, Umm Salama. There were two wives of the Prophet والسلام, with him. They were sitting with him, Maymuna and Umm Salama. And then who comes? Ibn Umm Maktoum. Ibn Umm Maktoum is a blind man. This Sahabi comes to the Prophet والسلام, and then when he tells him to come in, the two wives of the Prophet kept sitting because they thought like, oh, he's blind, he can't see us. He said to them, Ihtajiba. Ihtajiba means go behind the barrier. In the, in the room of the Prophet والسلام, he puts like a curtain. So when he has a man, he will put a curtain to be with a man and his wife will be behind the curtain. So he said to them, go behind the curtain. So they said to him, Ya Rasulullah, isn't he blind? <laughs> like he's blind, he can't see us. La yubsiruna, he can't see us. So what did the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam say to them? He, did he say, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot, he's blind, he can't see you. He said to them, Afa'am. Are you blind? He is blind. He can't see you. But are you blind? You can see him. You can't sit with a man face to face next to him. Don't you see him? Imagine they are the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, and the man is blind, but he still say, just go behind the curtains. Because sometimes women also get attracted to men. And that's the reality. Men get attracted to women. Women get attracted to men. All right. Maybe she's not going to be attracted to him. But what's going to happen? In some cases, she's looking at the man and she might start comparing between her husband and the man. Maybe she's married and she will start comparing. All these things create evil. It can create evil thoughts. It can create evil actions, evil words. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cuts evil from the root. So he wants to say, men and women keep away from each other. So what about if I go to a lesson? You want to go to a lecture? Don't stare in his face. Listen to the man. Okay, I want to listen. Like he's on the on your device. You want to put a lecture and to listen. Like don't stare in his in his face. Just put the the lecture. Listen to him without staring on his face. Listen to the lecture. So that is to keep you away from evil subhanallah like it is just it might not be attraction it might not be oh like uh, she likes him no no i'm not talking about that i'm talking about even sometimes like oh look his nose his eyes his hair his just don't look at the man it's better maybe you will you will judge him you will body shame him and and, and maybe you will mock him it is better just to keep yourself safe. If you know yourself that you have these, the tendency to mock someone or make fun of them, just keep away from it. So even for women, women have to lower their gaze. Because he's a man, uh, it doesn't mean that you don't lower your gaze. So men have to lower their gaze. Women have to lower their gaze. Men are separate from women. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ordered even the sahaba that, وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُنَّ مَتَاعًا If you want to ask something, or if you want a question, like ask a question or ask for something from the, uh, from the, the, the wives of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, or even women in general, فَاسْأَلُوهُنَّ مِنْ وَرَائِهِ uh, hijab. hijab in Quran is the barrier. 
So if a man wants to speak to the woman, he speaks with her behind a barrier, behind the door. Without opening the door and talking to him face to face, he say, ask her the question, talk with her, don't speak to her, especially if it needs like a lot of talking. That is more purifying for your hearts and their hearts. More purifying for we- for men and women not to be together in one place. So when you visit people, um, let men sit separately from women. Women will be in a room. Men will be in a room. You want to smile. You want to speak. You want to talk. Let women have the, you know, to feel comfortable to speak together. And let men be comfortable as well talking together. They have to be apart from each other. All right. Now, in another hadith, the Prophet والسلام, said, even the man is not allowed to look at another man's um, aura. Aura is there are certain body parts that a man cannot look in a man. And there are certain body parts from the woman that is not allowed to look in another woman. So there is aura. All right. You're not allowed to look at women oh, because she's a woman. It's OK. You can see her wearing underwear. That's not right. Oh, she's wearing bikini. You can look at her because she's a woman. I am a woman. That's not right. You cannot look at women. Um, there is certain parts in the body you're not allowed to look at. The Prophet والسلام, said, لا ينظر الرجل إلى عورة الرجل. A man is not allowed to look at a man if he's not covered properly. ولا المرأة إلى عورة المرأة. And a woman is not allowed to look at another woman if she's not covered properly. وَلَا يُفْضِ الرَّجُلُ إِلَى الرَّجُلِ فِي ثَوْبٍ وَاحِدٍ So a man is not allowed to lie with another man covered in one cover. So even like two brothers, they want to sleep. They're not allowed to sleep next to each other in one cover. They have to sleep separately. Yes, they are men. They are maybe friends. Maybe they are cousins. But the, the boy will sleep away from another boy. This one has his cover. This one has his cover. They shouldn't share one cover together. That's not allowed in Islam. Mm-hmm. So a woman is not allowed also to sleep with another woman. She can be your best friend. She can be your cousin. She can be your sister. You don't sleep with her together and you have one cover. You have to be separate. This one has a cover and this one has her cover. And there is in between them, you can see that they are not um, sharing the same spot. This is Islam. Protecting us from evilness. It, it it protects us from every evil thought, every evil emotion, every evil haram thing. Yes, we have to be alert. That's why we teach our children that they sleep separately. Um, and we have to make sure that we teach them all the rulings. If you want to teach your Dora, you tell your Dora when you when you change honey go to the bathroom or close the door and change tell your daughters not to change in front of each other tell your boys not to change in front of each other ah he's my brother it's okay to change in front of him that is not acceptable tell your son tell your daughter when they go to school do not change in front of uh, others let them take with them a towel say to them ask your friend to put the towel and you change behind the towel if they ask you all to change in one place. All these things. And if if you entered the room and you saw your, your Dora is, is changing, lower your gaze. Teach your Dora that I will lower your gaze if I come accidentally. Tell her... Um, Close the door if you change. Yes, I am your mother, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to sit down looking at you changing. 
Now we have to have boundaries here. And when I apply it as a mother, I will be teaching my kids these, uh, these uh, rules as well. So we have to be careful when it comes to uh, looking. We are not going to look randomly. We are not going to um, uh, do all these things randomly. No, we have to know what we're doing. I know what is halal. I know what is haram. I know my boundaries and I know the rules, uh, inshallah. What about the, um, if, if if the ladies, like, I know that the first question they are going to ask me, what about my in-laws? What about my uh, my brother-in-law? Um, can I uh, Can I allow him to come? Like, I am home. My husband is not home. And I am alone. And then my brother-in-law uh, comes knocking the door. Do I say to him, come in? Because he is like my brother. He's my brother-in-law. The Prophet والسلام, in this hadith uh, explained to us this rule. He said, He said to men, do not enter a house where there is a woman alone. So if the woman is alone in her house, do not enter the house. If you want to wait for the husband, wait outside. When the Prophet والسلام, went with his companions to another companion, because they were hungry, they went to him knowing that he has dates and he is, mashallah, like um, like he's uh, uh, financially able, so maybe he, he can feed them something. The lady said he's not here. They waited for him outside. So don't be shy to say, well, Lama, there is nobody at home except me. I'm so sorry. Can you wait for him outside or you can wait for him in the car? I'm so sorry, brother. Don't be shy. So he said, do not enter the house when there is a woman by herself. So a man asked the Prophet, What about the brother-in-law, Ya Rasulullah? What about the, the, the men from the, the husband's side? Maybe his cousin or his brother or his nephew comes and he's an adult. The Prophet ﷺ said, Alhamdul maut. The a relative of the husband coming by himself and she's at home by herself, that's death, he said. He described a man going inside the house when the woman is alone from the family of the husband as death. That's death, he said. So he's it's a big no. So anyone from the husband's side, you say, my husband is not home. I am by myself. If you have kids, your kids are aware, 10, 12, 11. And so he can come inside and he can be with his, with them. He can be sitting with them in the living room. And then you go inside. You're not going to sit down with him. You will say you can wait for your brother if he had to wait. And if it was very necessary, he can be with his nephews or his nieces but if you're alone at home, there's nobody, you only have children who are very young, then the answer is no. We have to make sure that everything that we do is halal. We have to keep away from haram. We have to speak nicely. We have to ask people nicely. You don't speak to him with disrespect, saying, oh, your brother is not here, you can't come in. You don't speak to him like in a, in a, in a heart harsh way say brother i'm so sorry i i'm alone at home and i can't allow you can you please wait for your for your brother outside like ask him nicely tell him nicely you can't allow him inside because you are alone in the house so we have to keep the boundaries we have to keep away from haram we have to lower our gaze even in front of women, it's not a, you go to the wedding and you see all these women half naked and you say, oh, it's okay, they are women. No, no, that is not okay. It is absolutely not halal. You have to make sure that what you're doing is halal. The place you're going to is a halal. Wherever you go, if you are in public, lower your gaze, speak well, respect everybody. 
and don't do things randomly until you know what you're doing is halal. Think and then do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us Islam, the manners of Islam, the boundaries of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us the way and the sunnah of our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the strength to keep on, inshallah, the straight path. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be his servants that he is pleased from, inshallah, so that we can see him in the day of judgment, so that we can go to the highest level of Jannah with our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And then we will be there forever, inshallah. And that is the real winning. That is the real happiness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us certainty. May Allah grant us sincerity. May Allah accept from us all our good deeds. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyina Muhammad. وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين جزاكم الله خيرا my beautiful sisters والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته